Luke, I am your replacement. Star Wars without Mark Hamill? One of the more noticeable differences between the first two Star Wars radio dramas and this one is the surprising lack of Mark Hamill. For whatever reason, he decided to be played by Joshua Farden. It's rare that someone as big as Mark Hamill could be replaced with a lesser known actor, but Farden managed to pull off an above average Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker performance. The story, like the Empire Strikes Back radio drama, follows virtually the same dialogue as the movie, but with added bits that detract from the experience because it's theater of the mind and the listener can't imagine unless we explain it. Because of this, it dates itself quick, unlike the actual film, which at least has some rewatchable parts, like the final lightsaber battle between Luke and Vader, and tedious parts, like the entire opening sequence at Jabba's palace. In the radio drama, it takes up the two to three episodes out of six. At least they were consistent with the ratio of prologue versus actual story content. Ewok Temptation and the Dark Side of the Force while in the final Star Wars film of the original trilogy, the Ewoks marked the beginning of a toy-focused franchise for years up to and including the prequels. In the radio drama, their presence is limited to the major story beats and one expository scene, though in that case they are mostly there as background chatter. The scene in question is when C-3PO recaps the events of the last two stories and it always felt odd even in the film. One of the main themes of Star Wars is evil's pull on people. The classic fall from grace archetype taken to an obvious and, let's face it, uninspired name the dark side. In the Return of the Jedi film, the fear that Luke would turn evil could have been handled better. If you asked people, if they really thought Luke was going to turn bad, the majority of them would say no. It's ingrained in our culture that good triumphs over evil in our stories. In the radio drama, the temptation feels more genuine, though not as nerve-wracking as the movie made it try and seem. Fast forward years later to 2015 and the now debunked rumor that Luke Skywalker was Kylo Ren in Star Wars Episode Seven was the Dark Plagueis is Supreme Leader Snoke theory of its time. The radio drama of A New Hope was by far the most unique of the audio trilogy, having scenes which added to the character roster and world. Empire was a carbon copy of the movie, and Return dabbled in the first at the beginning and end of the story, but ultimately follows the script of its visual media counterpart, and doesn't take too many risks in the grand scheme of things. Four out of five stars. What's happening, everyone? I'm your host, Maxwell, from Bay 13 Podcast. Take a step into Bay 13 for a look in the automotive industry. We talk auto history. Back in my day, we didn't have Snapchat. Engine performance, auto upgrades, and just talk shop with the guys. Education, entertainment, shop talk. Find it all Monday on Bay13Podcast.com. Next time on Audio Drama Reviews. Solaris Seethes. Solaris Saga, Book One. Written by Janet McNulty. Narrated by Darian De Maria. Hey, Mike Berganzi here, founder of Audio Drama Reviews. If you like what you heard, consider following us on Twitter and Facebook, subscribing to our YouTube and SoundCloud channels, and last but not least, our Patreon and iTunes accounts. Links to all those in the episode description. Have a great Audio Drama Sunday. Did you know you can read these reviews before they're released on the feed? Sign up for our email list and get new reviews delivered straight to your inbox. You'll be the first to know about new content coming to the site. Thanks for listening.